years ago, scientists discovered a huge and harmful hole in Earth's ozone layer, and the world rallied to repair our planet. Through the Montreal Protocol, governments came together and took urgent steps to control ozone-depleting substances and achieved enormous success. The uh, Montreal Protocol, if you look back in history, really kind of pioneered working on a really high visibility problem in a very effective way, in a way that didn't have a lot of precedent. Behind the scenes of the Montreal Protocol, three panels of world experts are bringing together the latest science and research looking at life as we know it. The panels provide governments with the technical, scientific and environmental information they need to make good policy decisions that will protect our ozone layer. For governments around the world to make sensible policy decisions, they need to be informed by good science from across the whole range of those different disciplines. Over the past 30 years, they have worked around the clock to help us get back on track. And it's working. With CFCs and other ozone depleting substances banned, the ozone hole is healing. It's been fascinating to me to see how many sectors are impacted. 99% of the reported use of ozone depleting substances has been reported to be phased out. We've started to see the ozone layer consequently starting to recover. We have avoided hundreds of millions of skin cancer. The Montreal Protocol, by design, has saved the world. But we can't stop now. We need to keep working together to protect our ozone layer and future climate for the generations to come. The scientific assessment, together with other assessment, are still vigilant. They are looking at uh, what has been agreed on, the science how it is being developed, the technology how it is being developed. The story isn't done, and, and the story may never be done, that we always got to pay attention to the gases in our atmosphere and what they're doing to the Earth's atmosphere and the climate of the Earth.